Your loving kindness and tender mercies. Your heavenly glory fill every line right now. Caught away, caught away with you, caught away in you, Lord, in your glorious glory. Your manifest presence, God. Arise. Arise, oh God, let your enemies be scattered. Arise, oh God, let the darkness be no more. Arise, oh God, in your glory in this place. Your manifest presence, Lord. Your manifest presence. you perform wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that can't be counted. Would you perform wonders that cannot be fathomed, miracles that can't be counted. Would you perform wonders that cannot be fathomed? Miracles that can't be counted. Would you perform wonders that cannot be fathomed? Miracles that can't be counted. Would you perform wonders that cannot be fathomed? Miracles that can't be counted. Everlasting, everlasting, everlasting God.
the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Unsearchable. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. Unsearchable. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. I'm searching for. Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. I'm searching of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God I'm searching for all the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God I'm searching for
as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. We worship you, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> we worship you. Blessed is your name, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. We worship you by the Holy Ghost. We worship you. Oh, Lord, we worship you in spirit and truth. Oh, God, we worship you. Hallelujah. <laughs> Get a baban de si re mamandero. Get a vebre mamandes is a vebre vavale. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord with all my heart. I will bless the Lord with all my soul. I will worship you, O oh God, in the spirit. I will worship you with all my heart. I will worship you with all my soul. I'll sing and make a melody. I will worship you with all my soul. I worship you with all my heart by the spirit and the understanding. I worship you with all my soul. I worship you with all my heart by the Holy Ghost and power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With joy and rejoicing. <laughs> Let me see you do that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn the mic up. It was good before. You can turn it back there. You can, you can be seated. I'll talk to you a little while, and then we'll get you back up and see if something might work a little bit better for you. Father, we thank you that you have given to us the Holy Ghost so that we might worship you by the Holy Spirit rather than out of a human realm that we might know what it's like to function and live in a heavenly realm. Father, we pray tonight that every person will understand how the program works and be willing to participate in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let me just say it's good to have all of you here. I'm glad you showed up. Some of you had to press through a bunch of stuff to get here. Some of you had distractions, other things that you could have been doing. You might have even had reasons why not to come. But when you're willing to keep God first, when you're willing to make commitments to God and follow through, Father can begin to work with that and begin to cause something to happen in your life where you, be, you experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. And once you do, it's, it's hooked, you, you'll get hooked. Uh, I, I, I tell you, you know, people... 
they go do things because it makes them happy and they don't do things because it doesn't make them happy. And usually, well, unless you just have to, you're under duress, like paying your bills and you go to work or whatever. But uh, by and large, you know, Father wants to fill us up with every good thing and it's just it, we have got stuck in religion. We've done an excellent job. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you've done an excellent job of avoiding God. That's a paraphrase of Mark chapter 7, verses 7 through 9. You've done an excellent job of being very, very busy and committed to stuff that doesn't matter for nothing. Like washing your dishes and washing your hands and scrubbing a couch. I'm not kidding you. He said this. This is what he said. You can look it up for yourself. It's Mark chapter 7, verse 7 through 9. He says, but when it comes to serving God, you've laid every bit of, a bit of it aside... And you just become a bunch of hypocrites, religiously doing things that does not even matter. And you actually put that in place of the things that really do matter. And I want to talk to you about the things that really do matter. Because, we, we, you know, I, every time I go to say something, I, I feel a check that, no, I'm going to be misunderstood. Every time I go to say something like prayer, I feel this massive check. No, you're going to be misunderstood. They believe it's something different than what you're trying to communicate. And it's very difficult jumping over your wall and getting to you. So today, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, I thought about just shouting till your wall came down so I didn't have to work so hard to get at you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, I, I tell you, people are all confused about the way the miracles work. You know, it is amazing to me how confused men get trying to think through how God does stuff. Jer wall of Jericho is a great example. I mean, I would rather try to scale a wall that is intact rather than one that's crumbled all over the place. Are you listening to me? It was actually a more fortified city the way that most people describe how the walls of Jericho came down. It would be a bunch of rubble. It was this high wall that becomes this whole huge mound of rubble. There's no getting through it. You'll break a leg in the first, you know, 10 feet. You know what I'm saying? And no, the Lord just caused the thing to sink right down in the earth, you know. It was a, it was a miracle on every sort. And you're a miracle in every way and, and every possible explanation. I want you to understand that you've got to break away from the things that are hindering you. If there's anything that we need to see today is we need to see Enoch's and walking around. If there's anything that we need to see today is we need to see people like Abraham walking around. Abraham was an amazing guy. I don't know if you know much about the nation of the Hittites, but every time you read about the sons of Heth in um, Genesis, like Genesis chapter 22 and 23, those are the Hittites, okay? And the Hittites were not a very generous and kind and warm-hearted people, okay? But you know what I'm saying, okay? They were pretty cruel, brutal folks. But when they looked at Abraham, they said, you are a mighty prince of God among us. You can have anything you want. I mean, we need people like Daniel on the earth. We need people like Elijah on the earth. We need people like uh, Sarah and Deborah and, I mean, just the, the mighty women of God on the earth. We need, we need the people like... Uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul and Philip and Peter in the earth and Stephen. We need these great men and women of God in the earth again. But it's not going to happen going on keeping our religious tradition and doing our little whatever it is that we do. I mean, Father wants to begin to fill us with things that are measurable and then we've got to want to measure them. Some people say, I don't measure it. You know, my goodness, if you do, you're going to discover you don't have any. Don't measure it. You might be just totally disappointed. Live in denial. It's like reading a bad email. You don't want to read it. Just don't read it. Put it in the trash. No, you really needed to read it because it wasn't that bad after all. But nonetheless, I mean, I can use lots of examples here. But people, I'm going to tell you right now. A joy unspeakable and full of glory is measurable. A love that goes beyond knowledge is measurable. People just want to sit. I mean, I, it's the hardest thing. Hardest thing. I mean, I tell you right now. Longer time, the longer people have been in church, uh, it, the harder it is to get at them. It's true, unless they've gone along with God. It's hard to get at them. They stuck, people get stuck in their little stuff and you want to get them out of their stuff, but they just won't let you. They, they're so, are so satisfied and so certain about their stuff. But I, if I could just get them to compare themselves for just a little while to Jesus, if I could just get them to compare themselves just a little while to all that God wants to do through their life, now that he has poured out his spirit. Listen, I want you to understand Nobody is going to be impressed with what we're doing and what we've been doing. Obvious. Look, they're not. Okay, they're just not going to be impressed with what you're doing. You're listening to me. I'm going to tell you what they're going to be impressed with. 
They're going to be impressed with the manifest presence of Jesus. They're going to be impressed with the glory of God. I mean, I'm going to tell you right now, when Jesus got over to Gennesaret, I mean, it was primarily just a bunch of people that were opposed to the gospel to start off with. But after, the, after his manifest glory and presence was, was, was seen in, in all the signs and wonders and taking care of people's needs and hurting people's broken hearts and, and solving their dilemmas of depression and oppression and affliction and torment, both the spirit, soul, and body. I mean, when they, when they, no sooner did he get out of the boat, the scripture says in Mark chapter 6 and verse 56, or rather it's 55, that they recognized him and they ran throughout all of the town and villages and reaching round about to go grab a hold of the people that were in need to bring him to Jesus. Everybody they could think of that was a family member that had a sickness, that had a disease, that had a problem of any sort, they knew where to take it. Uh, them too. And people, this is going to have to happen again. And I'm going to tell you, it's not going to happen the way that you're living your lives. It has to, it, it's going to take a radical change. And, and I want to talk to you about that radical change. And it's very, very simple. Stop praying like you're praying. Would you please? Please stop it. Could you, would you? No, no. No, I'm very happy with why I'm praying. Listen to the preacher now. He's telling me to stop praying. I went to church tonight, and the preacher that was there, he told me to stop praying. <laughs> well, if you want to continue on and get the same results you got, then, you know, carry on. You know, and then we'll just, we'll just try to sidestep you and love you in the midst of your, you know, whatever. But if you want to move on with God... Stop doing what you're doing and start doing it right. You've been doing what you've been doing only so, so that God can get a hold of you and show you how wrong you are so you can start doing it the right way. Hello. We just get stuck over every little expression. It's amazing to me how sensitive we are, how touchy-feely we are. We don't want to move on with God. We find a little place and then we want to just say, we want to, we want to be validated. We want somebody to, we all want to feel like we're, you know, doing something of value. We want to be valuable and that's understandable. But I want to talk to you tonight about changing everything. And now what you're going to do is every day, you're going to go into a place and you're going to stand there in this place or sit there in this place or walk around in this place and you're going to just be talking to the living God who's there, who hears you and you're, all you're going to be doing is waiting on his manifest presence that will come to you in such a way that it is unmistakably God. Amen. See, Father wants to develop us, develop us in the realms of his glory but only through a love relationship. Only through an interactive thing. And let me tell you right now, the more you do this, the more you give yourself to these wonderful realms of his manifest presence and of his glory, the stronger this glory will become in your life. To where that when you walk into work, the manifest presence is there with you. I'm going to tell you right now, this manifest presence will heal your body. It will touch your mind. It will, it will completely rearrange the way that you think, the way your actions, your deeds, the th everything about your life. It, it's not within the framework of, of some kind of rules and regulations. It's something far better. It's in the framework of relationship. I don't have a marriage with my wife based upon rules and regulations. I've not thought about the rules and the regulations at all lately. In fact, I don't think I've ever thought about the rules and the regu regulations. I'm over here interacting with her based upon relationship, and men have not been willing to do that with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the fundamental problem here that we're up against is that he's unseen. And it's difficult. I can't see him. I can't hear him. I can't smell. I, you know, there's no part of my sense working that is helping me here. Well, Father intended it that way because there's something he's going to do through your life much bigger than your senses. But you're going to have to become, you're going to have to be willing to become trainable in, in, in interacting in an unseen realm and that which you cannot see. But I'm going to tell you right now, it won't be long and there will be a visible reality of it. People, the only thing that is going to change the world around us is the manifest glory of God, and he's going to only do that through you and me. We're stuck here. We're stuck. We're stuck. Because what we got on one hand is people saying, oh, I've been seeking God. Oh, I'm just, I'm available. Yeah, but you've been, I've been seeking him right. I mean, you've been seeking him right, but you know what I'm saying? 
you've not been willing to move on. It's like you start off, hey, first grade is great. And it's great to pass first grade. But you've got to move to second grade. Because no one's going to be impressed your second, through, second time through first grade. They're going to be rather depressed. They're going to start looking at you suspiciously. Going for it the third time, I know you're just doing wonders. You can do this stuff with your eyes shut. You're the only one impressed. Everybody else wants you to leave. Okay? we got to understand, the Father wants to teach us there's a, there is a process going on. It's not sanctification. It's not salvation. It's not all these things that we make it to be. The process that is going on is us growing in love. And as we grow in love, we grow in this passion to want Him. Not to want the signs and the wonders and miracles, but I'm going to tell you right now, without signs and wonders and miracles, people are not going to believe. This is what Jesus said in John chapter 4 and verse 48. He says, without signs and wonders, people are not going to believe. I mean, this is absolutely mean, the means by which God remedies and cures the hard heart. If a hard heart can be cured, it is cured through signs and wonders and miracles. If the hard heart is incurable, then the heart just gets harder. But that's, that's, that isn't our business. Our business is to recognize that we've been given authority to shine as light, as the light to the world. That is not going to be a reality unless the manifest presence of God is being revealed through our lives. I want you to understand that that is a process. That is a relationship thing that you do every day. And you've got to find a way to do it because it's not going to be boring for you folks. The prayer that you have that is boring, that's the one we want to get rid of. That's the one we're on the outs. Out, stop it now. The one you're setting the alarm clock for for an hour so that you don't pray over, go over prayer time because you've got something to do and you look at the clock and it's only five minutes went by because you thought, you looked at it because you thought it must be broke. That kind of boring, slow, agonizing prayer. No. Father wants to take you over into glory land. He wants to take... Why can't... What is so difficult about understanding that, that God's presence is joy unspeakable and full of glory? What... Where is the mental block? Hello. Where's the mental block? Because I'm ta that's when I'm talking about manifest presence of God, I talk about joy unspeakable and full of glory. And once you, when you hook up that with that, who's, who's going to, I just don't have time to join us, speak home full of glory today. It's not going to be. It's just not even going to be. That's a ridiculous, I just don't have the peace, I don't have time to, peace, to do the peace that passes understanding today. I'm so busy in my turmoil and concern and worry. Let me just tell you this. Can I help you? Can I help you? I got a beauty aid for you. I'm going to tell you. Worry and stress will make you ugly quickly. It will. It will make you ugly very quickly. It will. It will make you old and it, it will advance you in your ears and sh ears. Years and sh <laughs> in short, in short order. Are you as me. Hallelujah. Praise God. And you know what? God's called us into the rest. His manifest presence has a beautiful rest. Somebody said, well, I got to come home and I got to get a glass of wine and I got to turn on the TV and so I can unwind. Bubba, I ain't going to get you far. You're going to die quickly. In fact, you're going to get worse, I'm telling you right now. All that stuff is a bunch of nonsense. All you're doing now is communing with more demon spirits. I'm telling you right now, it has compound interest with it. What Father wants to do is he wants to take you into the rest. His manifest presence brings a rest. Father wants us to enter, enjoy an interaction of love with Him. The Holy Ghost has come to pour into our hearts this wonderful love. Now, you can hear about it, and you can read about it, and you might even be able to quote the Scriptures. I'm going to tell you right now, the Pharisees could quote the Scriptures so perfectly. The scribes of the law could quote the Scriptures so perfectly, but they didn't do any of them. They didn't um, profit from any of them. You know, that's why, you know, we start speaking, singing about joy unspeakable and full of glory. People just stand there clapping their hands, patting their foot. That is no expression of joy unspeakable and full of glory. I mean, if God's people could just begin now to interact with God and say, I don't care. I don't care how tired I am. You know, like I started off saying, you might have had some things that come up against you. Maybe a tired body. Maybe you're feeling sick. Maybe you just had other it, you know, pressing needs, but you said, no, it's Wednesday night, I'm going to go to church. 
And you're going to be glad that you came because Father's going to meet you. And he's always standing there at that place of commitment, that place where you're seeking first the kingdom of God, where you're going after him to reward you. Because he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's just the way it works. I don't know what the mental block is. I don't know why people do not do this because I know that God has a fast track program. The Lord didn't say, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost to slow things down. I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost so that, you know, you, you don't have to worry about the fact that it's going to take you a whole lifetime to even begin to understand what I'm saying. No, he did the reverse of that. He turned this up. That, what, that's what that means. That means turn it up. He, he, he did the reverse of that. He said, I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost so that this would be expedited. So that everything that belongs to the Father can be transmitted to you. It's not going to happen. Somebody wrote a book said, are you, are you running with me, Jesus? I could have <laughs> saved them the expense. The answer is no, he is not running with you. No, he's not carrying you down the beach. No, all that stuff, no. He's invited us to come and be with him. He's not going to come and be with us. He's invited us to come to be with him. He's invited us up into a spiritual realm, a glory realm. You're going to have to leave earthly things, especially your worries, your concerns, and all the rest of the mass. You're going to have to just leave it. You're going to have to be willing to engage in being developed in a relationship that only comes by way of you in a quiet place all by yourself, in some respects, at some times, and then it could, it's got other dimensions. But it's really big. It really happens big here. But there's no one else around. It's just you and him. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you begin to talk to him on the order of, Lord, I know I'm a loser and I'm a failure. And, and I know I'm a big, you know, mistake. And, you know, and, and I'm sorry that you can't bless me. And I don't know why it's not working out. And I feel so terrible and miserable and lonely. Nothing's going to happen because Father's not even going to be anywhere near that. He's not anywhere near it. Understand, Father does not have a sympathetic heart waiting to answer someone's, you know, waiting for the most miserable display of, of, of someone's life, and then that, that's the one he's going to come and touch. He goes, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You're not going to come to him without an, a hooking up with the reality of who he is. I mean, yeah, you know, there is times that the Lord, the Lord does things, and I, I believe that this is one of those times, he does things that goes beyond the majority of people's faith. But there's always going to be one guy. There's always going to be Moses. You know, if you look at the story and, and when Moses was sent to Israel, about right out, they were starting to feel a little warmed up to the idea there's a possibility that the Lord's come to visit us. But as soon as they had to start making brick without straw, things went downhill quick. I mean, they reached the all-time bottom. They didn't want to hear about it. That, don't you say nothing about us being delivered. Look at the situation you already got us into. Leave us alone. Go away. We don't hear no more about your deliverance. And, and so what happened? When his father went ahead and stepped over top of all their doubt and all their misery and all of their affliction to do these mighty wonderful works to bring, to, to stir within their heart a, a confidence and an expectation. Well, to stir within their heart a hope again. Amen. Just a hope again. And then, to, and then to take it to a confidence and an expectation. I pray that there's no one in this place here tonight that you're that bad off. But if you are, I'm telling you right now, God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He'll come stir some hope on the inside of your life and give you some expectation. There's absolutely no way that we're going to be able to continue on as we are and have an impact upon the places that we live and work, the place we call home. Home is, home is the place that you're going to go tonight and where your bed is and your clothes are and where you relax and where you basically live out your life half the time. But home is also your work and home is also the place where you shop and home is also the place that you pray, play. And, and Father wants to bring his glory into that place through your life. But it ain't going to ever happen just because you call yourself a Christian and go to church once or two, twice, or maybe even three times a week. That's going to happen because you let God the Holy Ghost develop within you the ability and the capacity to reveal His glory. 
Father has done this before us in such an amazing way. He made us a new creation. And then he baptized us in the Holy Ghost and fire. But reality of it is, is that really, by and large, isn't consistently developed in most people's lives. People will run ruin. They'll go all day long feeling sorrowful, feeling sad, with something going on in the processes of their thinking that have absolutely nothing to do with faith and truth and reality or relationship with God. And so really, they're living under an oppressive, afflicting, tormenting realm. And there's no way that you're going to manifest the presence of God. There's no way that the glory of heaven... I mean, you might, you might be good at a smile. You might be good at a smile and talking sweet to everybody, but that's just going to go so far. I'm talking about when you walk into the room, if somebody's sick, they're healed. When Jesus walked into the room and there, there laid Tabitha, huh? What happened? All, she, he could just say, all he had to do is say, tell it the come, arise maiden, get up, get up. When, when, when Jesus walked into Peter's uh, mother's house and she was there sick with a fever, all he did is just walk over and touch her and move on with the program. People, a change, a wind of change, a wind of change. You're not going to, until you begin to feel Jesus in your life, until you begin to feel the glory of God, the Holy Ghost in your life, until you begin to feel the outworking of the Spirit of the living God in your life. I'm going to tell you right now, nothing's going to change. There's no reason for your babies to be sick. There's no reason for them to be disgruntled and affected. There's no reason for you to have upheaval and strife in your house. There's no reason for you to have broken relationships. There's no reason for you to have arguments and yelling and screaming and continual disappointments and discouragements. All of that is a realm of darkness. There's no reason for you to go from sickness to sickness. You're supposed to go from glory to glory. There's no reason for you to go from sorrow to sorrow. You're supposed to go from faith to faith. There's no reason for you to live in turmoil. It's supposed to be an ever-increasing manifestation of the power of God as you grow in this love relationship with Him. It's not going to happen outside of you being, in, in you being willing to come to a place where you enjoy His presence all by yourself. And His, and his presence is so manifested that it does more than bring a little half-smile. It, it more than just brings a little, a little giggle and a chuckle. It, it lights you up with the life and the glory of God. And then in, in, in the reality of that, then there is an increase because you, tomorrow morning you're going to get the same, in the same way. And you're, in the morning you're going to say, Lord, I want your wisdom. Father, give me your wisdom. Holy Spirit, I want your wisdom. Somebody said, well, I asked for wisdom yesterday. Well, this is another day. Holy Spirit, come, make me sensitive to you. Let me, let me lay hold on what it means to walk out my life and live out my life in a heavenly realm. People, do you want to die and go to the place that you're living right now? You're supposed to be living in the place that you want to die and go to. You're supposed to be, in other words, living in a heavenly realm right now. And there's, there's no, there is no restriction on it. Because God baptized us with the full dimensions of His glory in it. Hello. Hey, what's up here? Go ahead, have a seat. Go ahead, have a seat. Just have a seat. The problem... The problem that we have is things just like that. You know, people have come to a place that they're very confident that they know who God is and they know that they write with God and they just walk all over stuff. They don't even care. Everybody else is wrong but them. And they don't have to be under the rule of anyone. They don't have to listen to anyone. Whatever they feel to do, whatever they think is right, people chart their own course. We weren't redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ to chart our own course. We were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ and made a new creation so that we could now hear God teach us a whole nother way of living. Totally unique and distinct from everything that we've known up to that point. Okay, let me get you, I'm going to get you with a big heavy one. Up into the point that you were born again, everything you learned was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's, that's, it's going to be very difficult, it's going to be very hard for me to get at you with that one. 
Are you listening to me? Because we just can't accept that. We can't accept that. I made A's. I was, I was on the first string. I, re, I, got all the, I got all the trophies, whatever. No, 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 no. Everything that, you, everything that you know about life and the way you process it, the way you react and the way that you think about things, it's all wrong. It's all, it's all a realm that is brought purely by, at best, in the, way, the ways in which men think. But reality of it is designed by a satanic realm to hold men in deception and darkness. Now, Father has said, listen, you're, there's the way that you think. Here's what the Lord said. And I'm just kind of paraphrasing this and giving you in, in, in a kind of a, a real you know, easy sketch to follow. The way that you think, the, the way that you feel, the way that you approach your problems and your issues and your relationships is everything opposite of me. The way and the condition of your heart and your spirit cannot in any way relate to me, you can't hear from me, and you can't interact with me. That's a tough situation. Wouldn't it be terrible if I came preaching to you and said everything about you is unacceptable to God? That's it. You can't hear from God, you can't know God, you can't interact with him at all. God loved Moses. He loved Moses. He just said to Moses, Moses, don't get near me. You cannot get near me. That's what he said. Go read it. He said, Moses, you cannot get near me. Don't come near me. So just like this, do not come near me. <laughs> Literally, that is it. Do not come near me. And then the very next thing he said was, take off your shoes from off your feet, for the ground that you're standing on is holy. Now, we'll remember that part, but we don't remember the first part. Don't come near me. Why? Because you're unacceptable. You do not have anything about your life that can approach unto me. You do not have the holiness that takes to approach unto me. You, nothing about your life is acceptable. You can't get near me. And that's the condition of men. Father gives us a new heart and a new spirit so we can now interact with him, so we can understand what he wants. Now that we understand what he wants, we don't pay any attention to him. Ha, ha, ha. Go ahead and laugh about yourself. Now that we... Okay, well, I'll give it to you. I'll, I'll break it a little easier to you. Now that we can hear from him and interact with him, we barely pay any attention to him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I understand the fast-track program of the Scripture. And you can sit there all you want to and act like it's not so. But the fast-track picture shows us a fruit that very few people have. Shows us a manifest fruit in our life that very few people have. Hello? Hello? Just like I said. Now that we can hear from him, very few people pay attention to him. What do you say? Hmm? So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? What, first of all, you're going to get real soft and sensitive to it. Okay, because right now you're just still a little bit too hard. And by, But listen, you know, take courage because Jesus was constantly saying to the disciples, you're hard-hearted, man. You just you're slow to believe. You can't get it. You still don't get it. Hmm? He was, how many times did he say it? Jesus said at least six times that to his disciples, at least six times. So what's going to happen is there's got to be a softening of a heart that says, oh, that's true. Because we're so blinded by our own deceptions and by our own stories that we tell ourselves and our own excuses that we don't accept that. We don't believe that. We won't, we won't, we won't allow it to sink down into our hearts. And if we did, we would immediately change. Hear me? If we do, we immediately change. If I can get rid of your program of self-defense and ducking every time God speaks or running and hiding at the sound of his voice. Can you hear me? Yes. What? Can you hear me? Yes. When Adam disobeyed God and he heard the sound of the Lord's voice, what did he do? He ran and hid. Can, can, mm. See, what the, another problem is that you don't really believe God's talking to you. Some of you don't really believe that God's talking. You think that this is just, you know, we're just making it up as we go. I'm telling you right now, you're not going to be able to step in to the dimension of what God is calling you to step into, not just because of the, ne the neediness of the time, because this is the relationship that Father has for all men everywhere. This is the life. This is the abundant life. 
But then the consequence of being able to step into such a relationship where your heart becomes so sensitive to hear the Holy Spirit, to be led by the Holy Spirit, to engage in what the Holy Ghost is doing. I tell you, I know what the Spirit of the Son is doing. The Spirit of the Son is crying, I'm the Father. I know what the Spirit of the Father is doing. The Spirit of the, Spirit of the Father is declaring to all men and revealing to all men those things which are in his heart through our mouth. Amen. But our mouths are preoccupied with other things. Hello? Yeah. It's true. We, our mouths are preoccupied with whatever, wherever our thoughts are. Huh? The only thing that defiles a man is what goes into his heart. And people, go, allow, people allow all kinds of crazy things to go into the heart. They allow offense to go in the heart. They allow unforgiveness to go in. It defiles them. They allow all, and, and we don't even get to the big stuff yet. They allow strife to go in the heart. They allow envy to go into the heart. They allow discouragement to go in the heart. The Lord says keep your heart with all diligence. Don't allow those things to come into your heart. Because from your heart proceeds what? The issues of life. What is that? The Holy Ghost. Those are the streams that make glad the city of our God. That is, that, that is the means by which his manifest presence is beginning to be revealed through you. I mean, God wants to, encount, God wants to encounter you with, with a display of his glory that is like the force of rivers. And once encountered in such a way, you would have a supply of the force of his glory flowing out of you that would have the same or similar effect on the people that you meet. Amen. You're going to have to give yourself to this. First of all, you've got to believe it's true. Because if you don't, you're never going to passionately pursue it. If you don't believe it's true, if you just think it's, you know, fairy tale, folklore, uh, something that's optional, can't get it because there's, you know, mind-blinding spirits don't just work in full, they work in part. Did you know that? Yeah, if our gospel be hid, it's hid from those whom the God of this world has blinded their minds. But it also can work in part where that you have a mental block, you have a blind spot where that there's things that you've allowed to rule over your life and interest in your life that keeps you from hearing God and responding to them. The spirit of deliverance is in the house. The authority of God is in the house. The yoke breaking anointing is in the house. But you have to respond like that. You can't sit there all silent. It's not going to happen. It's a force field against the Holy Ghost. Res the reality of it is, is there has to be a responsiveness. Okay, imagine you're, 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 you're a girl and you're dating a guy. And every time you see him, he's like a brick wall. <laughs> and you're talking to him and he's just fixed. Every once in a while he looks at you like... <laughs> with no smile and then he goes back over. You're going to get away from this person. You're not going to carry on with the re relationship with this person. They're not responsive to you. In fact, if it is, is it doesn't even have to be that extreme. Women, we know it. Uh, you know it, right? Because us guys have heard it. We, if we're not being sensitive and responsive to just small issues, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. If we're going to have to have some kind of response here, some kind of sensitivity, some kind of, you know, uh, display of, of a little bit of emotion of some sort. Otherwise, this relationship is running, running, a ro running on ro rocky ground. Yeah. And that is something that is pure, purely legitimate. You're not going to have a relationship with anybody unless there's a responsiveness. And the more sensitivity, sensitivity there is, or the, the more care that there is, the more compassion that there is, the deeper that relationship is going to go and the, and the deeper the bond is going to be. And that's the way it is also with Father. I watch people sit in meetings and, they, you know, when, uh, when I'm out somewhere else and people aren't being responsive, I ignore it because I know it's just the status quo. But in my house, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess with you. I'm going to say, what you doing in here? What you doing around in here? This is a revival house. This is, this is a place where people are hungry for God. They want to move on with God. They want to understand a, a, the practical application 
of how is it that I quit being deaf, blind, and dumb? You know what I'm saying? How is it that I get my ears sensitive so that I can hear them? I get my eyes so cl clearly focused, the ability to see that I know what it is he's doing. My heart's so sensitive that I respond to him. Hallelujah. Well, there's no question about it that when you read the word of God, you must obey. If you don't, your heart will harden. If you read the Bible and he tells you, bless those that persecute you, and the very net, within the next hour or two, or even day or two, you come up against somebody that persecuted you, or that they slandered you, or said bad things. See, Jesus is our example. First Peter chapter 2, verse 22. He was slandered, he was ridiculed, he was persecuted, and he didn't, he didn't say anything back. He didn't return slander for it. He blessed. He didn't curse, he blessed. When, when he was threatened, he didn't rise up in self-defense. He just committed himself to the Lord. And, and, and the, the example is, come follow in his footsteps. Understand the meekness and the lowliness. Understand the character. Understand the nature of God that is being displayed there. we got to recognize, dear people, if we read the scripture and the Lord tells us something and it's burning our heart, because that's, that's what happens when you hear or read the word of God. And then you go and do the opposite. It will harden your heart. Your heart becomes hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Because you're just unwilling. You're unwilling to do what God says for you to do. Women, God told you don't have a rebellious bone in your body. He said it to the men too. Are you listening to me? He, said, he, said, he says to the women, he says to the women, listen to me. Because it's very important to you. He says to you. Submit yourself to your husband. But he says to the husband, to the man, he says, very important, submit yourself to God, the Holy Ghost. And so men want, and men want the women to submit themselves to them, but they don't want to submit themselves to the Holy Ghost. They don't want to be submitted to the rulership of God's divine power and authority. And so everything is messed up on the very principal foundational starting point. You're still in the blocks. You're not even running the race yet. You're in the blocks and you slipped out of the blocks. Are you with me? Yes. You, 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 you're, you're in the blocks. You're in the blocks to get started, but somehow you've removed them from off your life. You're not even on the starting, at the starting line anymore. And we're wondering, why is it that we can't make contact with God? Why is it the display of His glory? He says there's going to be a continual wellspring springing up on the inside of us, supplying us with the goodness of heaven, with the joy, with the peace, with all the life, with everything, the abundant life. Why is it that it's not a practical reality? Because people are not willing to do things God's way, and it's not going to work. These things that God has described to us, including salvation and eternal life, will not work unless you and I are willing to do it God's way. That's the starting ground. Now I'm trying to just now I'm trying to bring you into a place where you're going to be willing to give yourself to being another Enoch, but more. Where you're willing to give yourself to be another Abraham, but more, another Moses, but more, another Joshua, but more, another Daniel, but more. People who, the, the, the world around them looked at them and said, my goodness, look at these guys. The Joseph. These guys have the spirit of the living God. Joseph is very confident. He's not baptized in the Holy Ghost, but he's very confident. He's in the prison. He doesn't feel discouraged and rejected and still feel like somehow, you know, he's missed out on God. He says to the butcher, he says to the cupbearer, tell me your dream. I know the answers to them because I serve the living God who gives the answers. I mean, look at the boldness of the anointing and the giftings of the Holy Ghost and the mantle that is there in people that don't even have a fraction of what's been made available to us. I'm telling you people, it's wrong. Things are being done wrong. Principles aren't being kept. The, those things that belong to the kingdom of God are not being passionately pursued. I mean, listen, I'm, listen to me. Out, God said that out of our kolia, which is a Greek word, and we, we translate it belly, but it is a Greek word that means emotions and passions. He says, out of our emotions and passions shall flow the expressions of God like rivers of living, like rivers of water. He says it just like this. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given, for he was not yet glorified. Listen to me. Out of our emotions and passions. I watch people, and they, they give their emotions and their passions to other things that are purely earthly and of, and of a worldly interest. And God gets a little fraction. You're going to have to be willing to practice and participate with God in having those affections towards Him such that 
Now your passions and your emotions are filled with a responsiveness and an expression to him rather than screaming and hollering at people and being upset because it didn't go your way or whatever, or, or getting completely, you know, pink face over your football team. You hear, or green face, whatever they do. I mean, they get them all painted all colors. And that's giving your, that's giving your members, that's giving your emotions, that's giving your, your spirit, your heart, over the things that are opposed to God, it's completely opposite of the realm. It's completely opposite of the realm. So now you've developed the ability to really get passionate about all this other stuff. But the more you begin to be more passionate about all this stuff and is developed in your life, the less you're able to be passionate about the things that belong to the realms of God. But... The more you become passionate about the things that belong to the realm of God. And now your, your excitement, your passion, your emotion is found there in rejoicing and praising God. Who, who is revealed to you as someone that excites that, that inspires that. <laughs> I saw today as I'm trying to get my, you know, I'm trying to get tickets put together to go to Norway, to Pakistan, to, uh, to, um. Kashmir Valley and to Zambia, Africa. Imagine what that looks like. You know, it was like 37 hours to Norway from here and then 27 hours to um, Shinagar and then from Shinagar back over to Africa was 30, well, almost 30 hours again. It's a lot of flying. So praise God for wisdom. Fly to Dubai, it's only three, four hours to Shinagar, seven hours to Norway, eight hours to... Johannesburg, South Africa. But, you know, there was this little, this little thing in there, this little place where you could point and click and said, inspire me. Like a person that, that you know, they want to go somewhere, but they, they just don't have any inspiration. They'd like to do something, but they just don't know where they want to go. And so, you know, I didn't know what it was, so I just clicked on inspire me. And then they were showing all these beautiful places and all the things that you could do. You know, I wasn't being inspired by it, but it's a great example of what God the Holy Ghost wants to do. He wants to inspire you. Because when we talk about the fruits of the Spirit, we're really talking about the nature of God. And we look at Him and we say, look who He is. He's so full of this love. He's so full of love that He's willing to die for me. He's, he's counting me more than even a friend. And we look at his, at his mercy and his forgiveness and his long suffering and his faithfulness and all these things that dis describe him. And then when all of a sudden we recognize that it's more than just who he is, because, I mean, it would be amazing to see that that's who God is, but it's not relevant to me because he don't like me. You with me? You're, or you've never interacted with it. But once all of a sudden he is all of this and, he's, and he loves you and you, you're the recipient of all of that, you know what that's going to do? Take a guess. Just a wild guess. Take a wild guess what that's going to do. Huh? It's going to inspire you. It's not a trick question. Everybody's like... He's going to inspire you. Not expire. <laughs> You're not going to get that because the mind-blinding spirits will keep you from seeing it. What will be there instead will be condemnation, shame, separation, don't get near me, draw not nigh. That's the Old Testament. I mean, look at how Moses got to be used by God, even in a condition where the Lord says, you can't get near me. Look at how he got to be used by the Lord. Look at what all he got to see. Look at what all he got to engage in. Look at what all he got to do. Because he was willing to put Father first. He was willing to take all of his life. I mean, he was busy. He could have said, look, you know what? We're just about to get, to, we've been working for 40 years now to build the herd at this point. I finally got a good market price. And I got these things sold, but it's going to take me two more months to get it done. You know what he did? He walked away from the herd. He walked away from the sheep and walked away from the goat to go do and never looked back. And that's something that very few people have ever done. And what I'm saying is that you don't have to walk away from your job. 
but you need, to, you need to somehow get God in the midst of your job. You somehow need to get God. you got to quit living a dichotomized life, a bipolar life, a tripolar life, a multiple personalities life. God is going to have to be willing to find place. You're going to have to be willing to let God find place in every dimension of your life so that you're excited amongst, in the midst of all of the you know, naysayers and oppressors. You're, you're just... You're just there being who you are in God, praising the name of Jesus, praising God. Hallelujah. You know, I sit down in the plane. I don't care I'm in a public place. You'll see, it's just. Bob looked all the way at the, all the, way at the aisle. Who cares? They're getting touched. They're getting impacted. They're encountering something they never encountered on an airplane. Me. Yeah. You. Someone touched by heaven. Someone who's willing to live. They're not afraid and intimidated. Oh, oh, I'm a Christian. I, I hope you're not offended, but, you know, I, 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 just, I just chose them that way. That's about, that, I think that that's about where we're at. <laughs> That's about where we're at. And Father has purposed to display his glory far beyond what it was displayed through Enoch's life, far beyond what is displayed through Moses' life, Abraham's life, Elijah's life, any, Daniel's life. Mm -hmm. Thus he gave us this wonderful outpouring of the Holy Ghost where we'd be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. The word that as it were, the very men would encounter the very glory cloud of heaven when they encountered us. But that's not happening. You know why? Because we're not doing what God told us to do. Fundamentally, our life is consumed with all these other earthly things at best, and at worst, they're worldly things. Then, all of a sudden, we somehow get it in our head that progress is not something that is important to God. Progress, spiritual progress, isn't something that's important to God. That we can continue on with goo goo ga ga, mama, wa wa, ba ba, spiritually, language wise, in the way we communicate and talk, and that everybody thinks we're brilliant. And that we've developed properly. Are you listening to me? Yes. Father wants to give you the tongue of the learned. Yes. He, wants to, he wants to give you excellence of being able to represent what's in his heart what he wills to do. Yeah. Father wants to give you the ability where you're, you know, and I'm telling you right now, listen, you're getting, you're, you're, maybe you're, you're interacting with someone and you can feel like there's a real hesitance or there's somehow, a, you know, there, there's, it just, it just isn't flowing. You're not making the connection and you feel reluctant to tell them anything or say anything to them or even talk with them or interact with them on any level. But you move past that and you just begin to show them some kindness and love and some mercy or whatever they need. Immediately, the Spirit of the Lord grabs a hold of you because you're interacting with them, not because you're trying to make friends and you're looking for some more people like you. Do you know that that runs ruin a lot of people's lives? I'm just looking for some more. Well, I'm choosing and picking. Let me see in here. Is there anybody that I even want to like me? Oh, there's a person I want to like me. I'm going to go over there and, uh, you know, because they meet my standards, you know, whatever. This is, the, this is the way the human mind functions. This is what is completely foreign to God. So if that's completely out of the way, and now you're moving in the Holy Ghost because God is, you're allowed, your heart's been united with Him and you've got compassion for people and love for people, you love people because God loves people. And you get there, all of a sudden, Father gives you a word of wisdom for them. And their heart opens up like a flower. All of a sudden, you just, just because you're willing to be there to pray with them, to love on them, to talk to them, to speak to them, to speak to them right out of the heart of God, things begin to change radically in their life. And instead of coming and trying to give them a gospel track and tell them about how something happened 2,000 years ago, was well, something happening right now? Is there something happening right now? As a result of something that happened 2,000 years ago. Because first of all, do you, do you hear, there has to be a display of God's living presence right at this very moment. Go ahead, take a yawn break. Just yawn for a few minutes.
Get rid of it. I am, I'm just, I'm set tonight on you being able to grab a hold of the things of the Spirit and it becomes, you, be, you become inspired. Yes. <laughs> you, you become inspired to say, wait a minute, God is here. With all of his joy unspeakable and full of glory. You, are you telling me I don't have to live another day grumpy, in a bad mood, upset, worried, concerned, overwhelmed, tormented, tortured, mentally harassed, afflicted? Are you telling me that I can have days of heaven upon earth, that I can walk in the Holy Ghost, live in the Holy Ghost, that God can live in me and I can live in God, that I can literally enjoy the very life? and glory and presence of Jesus Christ, that I could have something that people would mostly define as revival week going on every second of every day. And more than revival week, believe you me. Hallelujah. 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 I tell you what can happen with your life if you're willing. That over the next year you can find a place to set aside maybe just an hour a day to start with. That's, you know, and I'm not saying just leave it to an hour a day because these things ought to be going on. A relationship of this type should be going on continually in your life. An interaction with him should be going on continually in your life. But you set a day, it's some time aside. An hour where you're not going to be distracted by anything. You're just going to spend time interacting with the spiritual realm, interacting with the unseen realm, interacting with that realm where the Holy Ghost is, interacting with that realm where Father's at, interacting with that realm where Jesus is at. You just walk in and say, okay, Lord, I'm here to interact with this unseen realm. I'm here to interact with the realm where you are. Let's get this, let's get this on. Let's do this. I tell you right now, that's going to get you a whole lot further than all of your other religious expressions. Just saying, okay, I'm ready to do something here now. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to go to school. I want. I want to hear from you. And Lord, I, I know that you're listening to me because I realize that I cannot come to you unless that I believe that you are, that you are, and that you're here. That's what the Scripture says. It is impossible without faith to please God because those that come to God must believe that He exists, that He is, that He's here. That he exists, that he is, and that he's here. It is the to be word that he's present right now. And that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And maybe that's your mat. Maybe that's what your, maybe that's what your walls are covered with. One verse of scripture everywhere you look. Yeah. Hebrews eleven six. So you can remember what you're doing there and what's going on. Lest you should get distracted and start drifting off and daydreaming about something that is purely earthly and worldly. Huh? That's true. Yeah. Yeah. True. He was minds float constantly. If they didn't, you'd, you'd be a lot smarter than you are. <laughs> it's true. Did you realize that? I'm not making a joke. It's true. Tensions, attention span. The ability to focus and concentrate. 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 God, the Holy Ghost, wants to work that out for you. He'll speak, peace into your, he'll, he'll speak peace into your mind and your thinking. In fact, his peace is... is, 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 is uh, <clears throat> he don't know say. His peace is supposed to so keep and rule and umpire your heart and your mind that it governs everything that's going on in your thought realm. But this isn't something that he's going to put on us and make us do. He, it is something that we're going to ask of him and be recipients of. And I'm not going to, oh, I'm going to pray today. I'm going to pray seven hours today so I don't, I, I, I've got my time covered for the rest of the week. Because I committed to pray for an hour a day. And so I, <laughs> 
seven hours a day, and I'm off all week. Whoa. I can do whatever I want to do. I mean, are you listening to me? And the fact of it is, there's a terrible heart and disposition anyways. But the second part of it is, is that it doesn't, what you did yesterday doesn't amount to nothing hardly today, other than it's that which you get to build on. It's that which you get to build on. How many of you have a 10-year plan to come into the fullness of the measure of the maturity of the minister of Jesus, even into a fully matured man? I mean, if you have a five-year plan, a 20-year plan, a lifetime plan, how many of you decided that you're going to quit sinning before you die? <laughs> because if you don't decide you're going to quit sinning before you die, you're dying and going to hell. According to the Word of God, according to the Scripture, you're, you're not making heaven. The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So you're going to have to have a lifetime plan that says, I'm going to, at some point in time, I'm going to start being righteous. No, I'm going to tell you right now. I know I'm talking to more than just the people on the web and the YouTube. I know I'm talking to people in this place because I recognize that folks don't make what God's plans are a reality and practical in their life. They're too busy taking care of their own human interests. And it's going to ruin you. It's going to ruin you. If you're not enjoying, you enjoy the presence of God. You, you, you do what God says. Be continually filled with the Spirit, and you're not going to have yourself a sin problem. You're not going to have yourself an anger problem, a strife problem, a hatred problem, a bickering problem, an envy problem. Can I be honest with you? I don't have any problem with babies in church. Because that's just the way it is. It's just, somebody say, how can you have, handle so many children in church? <laughs> What's new? <laughs> I, for one, I, I desperately want to grow up. I, I desperately want it. I want to bring fruit unto perfection. Amen. The Lord said, I'm taking the kingdom away from you, Israel. And I'm going to give it to another nation that will bring forth the fruits thereof. If you think, can you fix this mic? If you think that God is not interested, this mic was perfect when we got here. If you think that, I know it just, I don't know, it just backslides. <laughs> People backside in church. Before the meeting, I was feeling good. And I got in the meeting. And... <coughs> Thank you, Father. D tonight, I, I'm just trying to pull a commitment out of you. I'm, not, I'm try not trying to pull a commitment out of you to go sell more pots and pans. To go make more money. <laughs> to go be better. I'm trying to pull a commitment out of your life to reorganize your life according to God's calendar. To reorganize your life according to the kingdom of God. I want you to get down on your, I want you to get down on your knees and start talking to the Lord and say, Lord, I recognize that you are supposed to be the one who is at life, who, who, whose life I'm now living. It's your life. It's supposed to be here. In other words, it's like I was saying to you on Sunday night. People have a hard time in saying, I no longer live. It's very difficult. They just have a hard time saying, listen to me. They have a hard time saying, I no longer live as Christ that lives. Because they got it mixed up. Because they've never seen the bigness and the glory of God's life. How wonderful it is to be able to live his life instead of your life. The life that he's given. How, and, and how is this possible? This is, this is only possible for you to be under, able to understand the bigness of the life that he's given you is to where all of a sudden you value it and you recognize that it is the treasure on the inside of you. It is the, it is 
every good and perfect thing. It is, it is the, the abundance of all that Father has that he's freely given. And now you take it to heart and you say, Lord, I want to understand what this is. I'm, I'm, I'm desperate to see what you've given me that I, I haven't really been able to fully value yet. Because Father wants to bring you to this place where you say, it's God that lives here now. And it's God that lives here now. And I don't want to live. Rather than it being something that's not really relevant to you. It's not really a, a reality. It's like you're saying something that you don't fully believe. Has anybody felt that? Yeah, there's people that felt it. Just about everybody. And it's just because you're not standing in his presence. You need to stand in his presence more. It ain't God's fault. It's the unwillingness to make the changes that are necessary. It's the unwillingness to spend time with the one who's going to fill you with faith. He gives you a measure of faith and wants to develop the faith. He pours his love in your heart by the Holy Ghost and wants to help that, that love to permeate every part of your being. But you've got to participate. There's got to be this interaction going on. It's an interaction that's going on with the Word of God on the level that you're reading something that you're going to do or you're reading something that you want. Have you read anything in the Bible lately that you want? Has anybody read anything that you want? What is it that you read that you want? And how, then how much do you want that? Do you want it on the level, oh God, I really want this. I hope you can get around to getting it to me someday. Because the reality of it is, that's certainly, going to be, that's certainly going to cancel any opportunity of you having it because these things are that which has already been given and we have to be willing to receive it as that which has already been given. It's not something we've got to talk Father into. But what he's doing is he's talking us into it and he's saying, no, you're going to have to make these adjustments in your life for, this, for, for what I've given and what I've supplied to be relevant to you. Mm. Jesus. Pasta ki matalomo prasea te shi. Halambangate shi. Hambrado zeveki apatashi animo. Avreda sikista de matea. Somehow, you know, it's got to come down to the place to where that. I mean, let, let me just let me try to frame it up this way for you. Perhaps you recognize that. The presence of God, his love, his compassion, his goodness needs to be seen on your face before you go into work. And maybe that's enough to motivate you or inspire you to touch heaven so that you don't look like you just come from hell. You know what I'm saying? That you don't look, that you have some kind of a display or representation that you've been born again and filled with the spirit and you're God's representative on earth to men. But, you know, really, there ought to be a higher motive than that. There ought to be just a motive of recognizing that he's here, that he's with us, that he wants to teach us the ways of life, that he wants to interact with us. Just on, lay aside, teach us the way of life for a minute. He just wants to interact with us. And he doesn't connect with sorrow and disappointment and discouragement, and doubt, and unbelief, and disgruntledness, and worldly desires, and earthly interest. So that basically does away with everything. <laughs> but he's here, and he wants to interact with us, and he wants to connect with us, but he wants to develop within our life, first and foremost, just a willingness and a desire to know him to really interact, not with a religious ideology or an icon, but a person. And I believe that there's some people that need to just break through that barrier. Lord, I'm, I'm having a bit of a hard time here recognizing the reality of your present, w presence with me and in me. Somehow, Lord, I have got a, I've got a blind spot here. I've got a mental block here. I've allowed too much stuff around me to run interference. And you listen to me. The more you give place to sin and iniquity and earthly interest, the harder it is for you to believe that he's a very living, present God. You believe me. It's the worst, it's the worst part 
of interacting with the demonic on any level. It's the worst part of it. It blinds us, it, 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 it distances our affections, our emotions, the, the, the attachment of our, of our thinking, the reality of his presence to him. And I believe that it's, this should be a place where people, if people are gonna agonize, this is a great place to agonize. If people are going to, if it's almost like if I had to make steps in prayer, this has gotta be your first step. Lord, I wanna know that you're here. Lord, I want, to be able, I want to be able to move past this barrier that I have about interacting with you and the reality of your presence. Now you're starting to get real. Let me tell you right now, God is a God of truth. God is a God of truth. He's not going to mix it up with lie, pretense, fairy tales, nothing. Make believe. He's not going to, if your heart's not really into these things, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not going to get his attention for one moment. But all of a sudden, you begin to get real truthful and real real with Father, real radically real. Lord, I want to know that you are here. You, I know you said in your word that you were with me and that you were in me. And I want this to become a living reality to me. I want this to become visible to my senses. I want this to be visible to my conscience. Show me, Lord, the things that I've allowed in my life that is running interference with the faith that you've established with the reality that you brought by this new birth. And he will. Oh, we just play, play, pretend like somehow God doesn't like us or somehow we don't have to work through this. He will, I'm telling you right now. You have not because you ask not. And when you're asking, you're asking, for God, asking God to do something that doesn't even matter. Has no value. No, no, real, no real importance in any way that has it, you know, for, as far as eternal significance goes. <laughs> Takate esipotokoma neikishi was given to us an amazing gift that takes us right over, right immediately out of the natural thinking and realm and concern, right over into a divine state of interacting with God the Holy Ghost. Right over into a supernatural expression. And I don't know that, I don't, I don't know that we understand how to move forward in that. The Lord says, build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. And I don't know that we understand how to, how to excel in that. I mean, it is amazing to me, for example, how many Pentecostal churches, full gospel churches, people that believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They don't even sing in the Spirit. And it's what God, I mean, that's not just for Pentecostal churches, full gospel churches, that's for all churches. All churches are supposed to be Pentecostal, full gospel churches because that's where church was born on Pentecost and it's supposed to be a full gospel church. According to what Paul said, I fully preach the gospel with signs and wonders and the power of the Holy Ghost. But nonetheless, we've got all these things going on. We're supposed to be singing in the Holy Ghost, singing in the Spirit, and then singing in the understanding also. We're supposed to be praying in the Spirit and praying in the understanding also. And we'll just go, just sing, sing, sing. Where's the Holy Ghost? What's going on? I'm not interested in the next top 40 Christian song. I'm not interested in something. I'm interested in the song of the Spirit, says the Lord. I'm, Father says, no, he's not interested in all the preaching and the singing. He's interested in the preaching and the singing that comes as a result of flowing in the Holy Ghost. We just want to have a program. And we want to fit God into a program. And we want to prioritize him and, and memoize him and put him in a daytimer, in a planner. No, we've come into the God kind of life. And there's going to have to be some travail and agonizing going on in people's life. If that's what it's going to take to recognize, wait a minute, I've got God's life. I'm God's representative. It's, it, it's a flow. It's not something i got to do. I'm not under some kind of, you know, obligation to produce this. God's empowered me. Glorify me in your body and your spirit. He's empowered you. It's like, oh, no, how am I going to do this? Oh, my goodness. Now i got to glorify God in my body and my spirit. i got to try to figure out how to put on the whole armor, and I don't even know what happened to the helmet. <laughs> And we lost one shoe, one of the shoes one night on the way home from a Pentecost meeting. I mean, it's, he empowers us with supernatural ability. We embrace it and move in it. We bring everything into such ritual and religion that it stinks. And it has no power. And it doesn't produce anything. 
You're going to have to hit the reset button. Blow it all up. Start over. <laughs> broken arrow. Broken arrow. I think that's what they said in Vietnam. And then just blow everything up, including the troops, the, both friendly and hostile. It's a mess anyways. They're going to kill us, so just, just kill the whole thing. That's pretty desperate. What are we going to do? What are we going to do here? What are we going to do here? What are we going to, what, how, are we going to, how are we going to rearrange this program? How are, we going to, how are we going to put the things in its proper order? How are we going to go ahead and convince ourselves that we no longer live? How are we going to step into the free gift that God has given to us? He says, be holy, even as I'm holy. Now you really feel obligated, don't you? Aren't you feeling under pressure now? Well, at least the, the people that went before us, at least they took it to heart and go, my goodness, God says, got to be holy even as he's holy. Man, we better get with this program. What do we got to do? And they went, they seriously went to agonizing. But there's only one way that we can be holy even as he's holy. We received it as a gift. But it's not something that we receive as a gift and it's not valuable to us and important to us. It's so sacred to us because if we would have spent our whole life doing everything perfectly and striving with everything that was that was within us and then to find ourselves to win the grand prize, that's what we would have gotten. But God gave it to us as a gift. And it's free, but it's, it's sacred and it's not cheap and it's got to, I mean, come on. Can you wear it as a ring? Do you have your ring, baby? Can you wear it as a ring? You, you have your ring on, Ellie? Can you wear it? I'm going to just show these rings. Can I have your ring? Nobody has any problems putting these rings on. Huh? Nope. <laughs> I just make sure I don't get them mixed up here. Because I, I would hate to give you the wrong ring and then you not, and you didn't realize it and I didn't realize it. Not. Hey? Why? Is precious. Right. What, is it, what does it do more than anything else? It speaks of a relationship, yeah. a covenant. Mm -hmm. How do you wear the ring of the relationship the Lord's given you? How do you begin to value something that the prophets of old looked earnestly into, who prophesied of the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow? And it was revealed unto them that they weren't speaking under their own selves or their own generation in their own time. But they were declaring something to you and me. They were declaring something to us. Touch baby, Lord. In Jesus' name. So fever goes off this baby. In Jesus' name. Out. Out of the house. Smash it like a spider crawling around. <laughs> Amen. How do you take the anointing that he's given, the mantle that he's given to you, the mantle of the very life of Jesus? I mean, it just so disturbs me. People talk about the mantle of Elijah and the mantle of this. And the mantle of Jesus. Be endued with Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the mantle. That's a cloak. The, indu, the Greek word enduo speaks first and foremost of a cloak, a mantle. How sacred are these things? Are they more precious to you than anything else? God wants to make them more precious to you. God the Holy Ghost is the only one who can do it. But you have to let him. He in his mercy will give you wisdom and revelation. He in his mercy will open up your eyes and open up your understanding and allow you to take a hold of the knowledge of Christ. But you've got to quit diddle-dallying around and messing around and playing, playing games. You've got to be willing to hear his word and say, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what you say, Lord, by your help and your grace, I'm going to do it. And Lord, you, Lord, you told me to walk in love and joy and peace and long suffering. You told me to walk in gentleness, goodness. You told me to walk in this realm of faithfulness, meekness, and temperance. I'm going to do it. Lord, you called me over here. You said that I'm supposed to. You see, this is what the Lord said. He said, if you've been given the divine nature 
and you've escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. I'm talking 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. He said, now I want you to do what you're going to do. You're going to add to your faith virtue, and to vir virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance. And to temperance, you're going to add godliness. And to godliness, you're going to add brotherly kindness. And brotherly kindness, kindness you're going to add divine love. And he said, if these things be in you and abound, they shall make you, need, that you should need, neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of God. But if you lack these things, it's because you're blinded. You've been blinded. You've been blinded. Offense will blind you. Unwillingness to be submissive to the Holy Ghost will blind you. Participating with sin and worldliness will blind you. Having, having things that are contrary to the, allowing things to dominate your decision making. People allow rebellion to dominate their decision making. They allow offense to dominate their decision making. They allow unforgiveness. They will allow hurt to dominate their decision making. It's not God the Holy Ghost that's leading them anymore. It's the hurt that leads them. It's whatever to dominate your decision making. That's what leads you. That's what leads you. Whatever comes into your heart will defile you. Whatever comes into your thoughts, your thinking, what now sets up there in your life becomes a stronghold of authority. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'll grab a hold of with me this wonderful opportunity to submit ourselves to the Holy Ghost. Just continually, we're reliant upon Him. We need Him desperately. We can't do this without Him. We can't do this without Him. I watch people constantly. I've watched this. I've pastored for 34 years. I, I, I just leave people alone, leave people alone, leave people alone, leave people alone that really need some, some instruction and direction. And then the Lord tell me to speak, and I watch what happens to them over and over again. They're offended by the Word. But they were always offended by the Word. But they could hide. They could just hide. But as soon as I brought it out by the Holy Ghost and said, you are the man or you are the woman, they are offended by the Word. You make a choice now. What they were always choosing, always all the but hidden in a kind of a recessed way because they weren't being confronted. Now all of a sudden it became such that they turned and walked away from the Lord. You know, people can be just fine until you hold them accountable. But did you know that the Lord is holding you accountable tonight? Did you know that the Lord is going to hold you accountable? That you're going to have to be ready to give an account for everything that's going on in your life? Did you know that you don't know the number of your days? Did you know that you could, be, you could live your life as a foolish person? Like one of the foolish virgins that Jesus talked about. They were going to the wedding feast. They, you know, they had all the gear except for the oil. They were there. They were ready, as it were, up to the point of being ready to fully give an account on every level for everything that they were supposed to be given account for. He said, he tells us over and again, don't be unwise, but be wise. Now, what is the will of God for your life? <coughs> don't be drunk with wine where it is debauchery, but be continually filled with the Spirit. I'm asking you here tonight. I'm making an altar call here tonight. Are you giving place to God to be continually filled with the Spirit? Are you giving place to Him to let Him rule your life? Do you realize that every single day is sacred? It was made by God. It is holy. And you're, it, it, it is, you, ha, you had a, a day, you spent this day, and it was something, something so sacred to God. It may not be sacred to you. It may just be you're having to run round and round, you know, grinding meal for the Philistines with your, you know, hair cut off, eyes plucked out. Get out of that, because that's not true. Papa's coming. He is. He's coming. And he's, and he's got fire in his eyes. And, he, and he's coming to judge the world in righteousness. He is. And everybody gets up when they see him coming. Everybody gets all ready. He gets all conscious and sober for a minute. Are you ready to give an account? That's, that, that's first place. Second place, are you ready to be used by God? Are you ready to move in to a place of relationship with Him to where that you are just so fulfilled, you don't need anything else. I get this relationship with the Lord. It's like, I don't need to preach. 
And I hear all these people tell me about how desperate they are to preach and how hungry they are to preach. And it's so wonderful and everything. But, you know, it seems to me like they were so sad offline of preaching. And I never understood that. It's like, well, why? Okay, so you need to preach to understand that. You're supposed to go on the world, preach the gospel, understand that. You've got a call and get thing upon your life. But why aren't you happy just being alone with him? I'm so happy just being alone with him. I don't have, I don't have need of nothing. I have no needs. I'm just like, Lord, this is, this is, now, I am willing to get on an airplane and fly for 27 hours. Four times. <laughs> and two and a half weeks. Because of where I'm, because of what I have in him. You know, it comes to a place in our lives where we're standing in our living room. I was standing in the living room last night and I was so overwhelmed with the presence of the Lord. And I'm thinking, once again, Lord, the majority of your people that sit in your church have never even experienced this that I'm experiencing right now in my living room. They've never, they've never even experienced this. They have no idea of this glory, this glory realm. They have no idea about healing. They have no idea about being filled up with your glory, overwhelmed with your goodness. Lord, I'm so desperate to go and take your manifest presence to them and hand it to them, put it in their hands and let them walk out the door with the big present. Father, I want you to do it in your mercy. There's been times in my life where the Lord's allowed me to do it. He's allowed me to just literally, I could feel as it were a, a huge ball, for lack of a better description, of his glory in my hands and just say to someone, or take this. Just hand it over to them. I so want to, I so want to do that for every person in this place tonight. I so, you, I so want you to become captivated with the beauty of just enjoying his presence. Let me tell you this. Prayer is enjoying his presence. Listen to me. The other night, you know, you heard me say this many times, but I actually heard someone else say it the other night. It really blessed me. Joe Cruz's sister is, um, is, um, is Joel Olstein's worship leader. And she was on television the other night. And they were just interviewing her and just talking about her worship and how unique it is. She comes from a family of worshipers. And this, first of all, let me just say this. Joe is, as far as I'm concerned, far more, far more gifted. But he's paid the price. You know what price he pays? To flow in Pentecost. There's always a price with it. Can you hear me? Yes. Anybody hear me? Yes. Besides the Lord? I know he's listening because he's the one who's speaking. But she said something that's so true and is what makes her distinctive and unique in the place and the realms that she's in. She said all, wor all worship is, is prayer set to music. That's all it is. If we could just begin to make things more real than we're making them, we're, 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 we're slipping, we're drifting. Every day that we're not allowing God the Holy Spirit to come and make these things the reality that they are to where that we interact with him as the person that he is right here with us, ready to do whatever we ask, ready to be our servant. What? Yeah, ready to be our servant. That's what he made himself to be for us. Somebody said, oh, no, that was just there on the night before he was betrayed. That was just what he did for us at Calvary. No, he made himself to be our servant. Because one day, when we sit around the, throne, when we sit around the table of the Lord, the scripture tells us that Jesus is going to have us sit down. It's our rewards banquet. And the scripture says, he's going to take towel in hand. And he's going to serve every one of us. He won't allow anybody to serve us but him. Somebody said to me one time, they said, why don't you allow anybody to serve communion but you? Because I'm just wanting to be a witness to what Christ Jesus' servitude looks like 
He's not going to allow anybody to serve but him. If you'll break through this barrier tonight, listen to me. If you'll break through this barrier tonight, it's holds you to hold you back from rearranging your schedule. Anna, looky here. Look here, baby. Come on now. You big girl. If you'll break through the barrier tonight. that stands there unwilling to compromise and change the schedule of our lives. Because that's where people are at. They're just saying, they're saying, I'm too busy. It's, it's great, baby, but not right now. <laughs> uh, listen. Listen to me. Father wants you to completely rearrange the entire schedule of your life. From the time you get up to the time you lay down at night, he wants you to rearrange your schedule for him. If you'll break through that barrier, you will actually be a restorer of the paths to dwell in. You'll be a leader in the moving of the Spirit of God throughout the nation because you, you break through and now there's an entrance for other people to come through as well. Everybody's just kind of stalemated. They're looking at this call of God and, in, and, and then surrounded by that which the world and everyday life imposes upon them. And there's no moving forward in God. What I want you to do right now is I want you to stand with me. I want you to lift your hands towards heaven. I just want you to stand there and enjoy the presence of the Lord. Just enjoy his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want to just read this to you just in closing here tonight. The Lord says this. He said by his prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 58, and it's good for every generation, for then and for now. 
He says, if you'll turn away your foot, if you, if you will. If you'll turn away your foot from doing your own pleasure on my Sabbath. And I want you to, it's very important for you to understand this. We live in the rest of God. Every day is Sabbath now. In other words, he's, he's just saying, if you'll turn away your foot from doing your own pleasure, it's similar to saying that we're not doing our own will anymore. We're doing the will of the Father. We're not walking in our own way anymore. We're being led by the Holy Ghost. We're walking in the Spirit. If you'll call that which I have sanctified holy, if you'll delight in the holy of the Lord and call the holy of the Lord honorable, if you'll stop doing your own, walking in your own ways, doing your own things, finding your own pleasure and speaking your own words. He says, then what I will do is cause you to delight yourself in the Lord. As long as you're delighting yourself in you, God's saying, you're not going to delight yourself in me. As long as you're finding your own pleasure, you're not going to find my pleasure. It is so easy to move in the direction and the inspiration of the Lord. Let me just show you this real quickly. When, when you've committed yourself to the Lord and now you're not reacting constantly out of your own emotions and out of your own you know, responses to challenging situations, but you just quietly say to the Lord, Holy Spirit, you speak through me. Holy Spirit, you lead me. I want to represent you. And then if he gives you something and you have something, it doesn't matter if it's an email, a telephone conversation, what it is, you're now being trained by the Lord to speak on his behalf and move in the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom and, to, and, 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 and prophecy and revelation. But as long as you're just doing it and it's just going, whatever's coming into your mind and whatever's coming into your head, and you have no hold over your own responses and you have no hold or governorship of God's love and grace and mercy and forgiveness over the way you interact with people, you'll never know these things of heaven. But if you just say, look, I'm not going to do my own pleasure anymore. I'm going to start doing a father's pleasure. And that's not something that is, that is hard and, and awkward and weird and taxing, but it's truly pleasurable. Yeah. Everything changes about our lives. Everything changes. If I could get you, if I could get you tomorrow to just participate in what you were just doing and just stand in your living room, out in your backyard, how many of you are willing to pray in your backyard? How many of you are willing to pray in your front yard? How many of you are willing to walk around the block praying? Sometimes that's, not a, that's sometimes that's not a good thing to do. I'm going to tell you why. Because you're more thinking about what people are thinking about you and who's seeing you and what's going on around you. And that's why it's better shut in. It's better to shut in. Huh? Until you get to the place where you can be in public and it be as though you're in a secret place. I'm going to talk some more about the practical application of functioning in the inspirations of the Holy Ghost in what you say and, and what you do and your responses this Friday night at the School of the Spirit. I hope you can come. Father, we are so desperate. We are in such... We're in such desperate need. Father, we're in such desperate need. I'm asking you tonight to change everything about your life. Everybody. From me to everybody. I'm just everybody. everybody. Could you, would you change? Yes. Or would you, would you be willing to give more place to the Holy Ghost because the Holy Spirit wants to have the whole of you and your, the whole of your life doing nothing other than expressing who He is. That's what's going to change the world. That's the glorious life. That's the, the honor and the majesty that we've been privileged 
to function in. There's got to be a starting place in our lives. And then, and, then, and then when it's a starting place, then everything about our life, we, do, we just go around and collect everything and we make sure that everything about our life, every dimension of our life is conformed to that. Whether it's, whether it's our singing or whether it's our praying or whether it's our activities at work or, or at play or everything. How we eat, everything. How we carry ourselves in every dimension of our lives. It's about God, the Holy Ghost, having his way and revealing Jesus through us. And, it's, and, and, and we don't get weird or flaky about it. It's just real practical things. Lord, are you in charge? As I'm sitting here watching this R-rated movie. I'm going to try to bring some real practical stuff here, okay? So because people aren't getting it. Well, I'm sitting here arguing with someone. Where I'm sitting here all upset because I didn't get something I wanted. I'm talking about going around your life, going in your house, looking at your books, looking at your, your DVDs and your CDs. And is, it, is, this, is this about you, Lord? Is this about me giving place to you taking complete control of every dimension in my life? Go look at your closet. People wear pretty good dresses down here, but as soon as if they, if they, if they worship, it turns into an ultra miniskirt. So now they're under restrictions. They can't worship with that dress. They've got to worship like this. <laughs> so they said, ah, oh, now you're getting on. You're, now you're becoming a clothesline preacher. Well, I'm not going to leave anything out tonight. Yeah. I'm talking about every part of our life. Just saying, is every part of our life conformed to the Lord? Where is it that you're not allowed to? Look at my face, Lord. At what part of my face... Do you commune in, when you're talking and you're quiet and you're alone? Are you communing with sorrow? Are you communing with past hurts? Are you interacting, relate, having a relationship with pain? Many people do. Many people lay down lonely at night. Rehearsing regret evaluating their failures of the past. Someone said to me the other night, preacher, and as the preacher was talking to me, the preacher began to tell me about their failures, about this thing, that thing. And I'm telling you right now, I had this mantle of heaven. I mean, I, if there's ever I felt like the Father's own voice was coming out of my mouth, it was at that moment I said, I was saying, I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about that at all. I'm certain Father knows nothing about what you're talking about. What you're saying is absolutely foreign to heaven. And the person got delivered. You know why they got delivered? From that tormenting thing? Because they know how to respond to the anointing. Do you know why so many people do not get delivered from tormenting things? Because they do not know how to respond to the anointing. It's easy for Hindus who've never heard Jesus to respond to the anointing. It's easy for Buddhists. It's easy for the people who've been out there in the third world countries to respond to the anointing. There's never been a resisting going on. I want you to, I want you to let God, I want you to let God sort it out because I'm telling you, there is nothing that Father will withhold from you that is good. There's no yoke that he cannot break. There is no stronghold that he will not decimate. Amen. Or effect or influence of wrongdoing or sin or rebellion or hard-heartedness. He'll soften your heart tonight. Hallelujah. Everybody that's standing in here, if you're watching me by web or by YouTube, tonight God the Holy Ghost is here to touch you. You're going to have to be willing to respond to his word. You're going to have to get responsive to his presence. It's called receiving. <laughs> as many as receive him, he gave him the authority to be sons. As many as anyone who would believe upon his name. Tonight, I'm, I'm asking you on behalf of the living God. 
If you've grown cold, or worse than that, lukewarm. And you want to get right with God, and you want to get on fire with His glory and with His presence. I mean, when I'm saying on fire, that's your passions lit up. No more ritual, no more moving just through the moves and going through the motions. But literally on fire with inspiration from heaven. Father's here, standing right now, ready to touch you, ready to meet you. You respond to him, I'm telling you, he's responding to you. He responds to you. He responds to the call. He responds to the cry of the heart. He responds to the insistency. He responds to the person that says, I don't want to live my life anymore. Why don't I want to live my life anymore? Because I saw the God kind of life. I want the God kind of life. And I know I can't live God's life in my life. I want the God kind of life. Thank you, Jesus. I'm bumming. Listen to me. You hear me. This is for you. This is for me. This is for all of us, all of the church. You hear me. The Lord gave us a new heart and he gave us a new spirit so that we might understand him, know him, and respond to him. And this, and this time of ignoring him. Has to come to an end in our lives. And I put a big hour in there. All of us. God in His mercy is willing to make us so aware of who He is. So sensitive to His interaction with our lives. All we've got to do is be willing to recognize the error, the problem. Us just doing it. Well, we're just going to do it and God's going to bless us. Jesus, Jesus. That ain't the way it works. Father's looking for some people that will be willing to do it absolutely His way and only His way. And that means that we're going to have to get still. We're going to have to learn how to shut our stuff down. Come on now. And I know that many people in this place, and I know the majority of folks across the nation, do not know how to practically put that into place in their life. They don't know how to shut everything down. They don't even know where to begin with that. We want to teach you. You shut everything down in your life by turning everything on of his life. And it starts in the morning when you say, Lord, I want to be your representative today. Holy Spirit, I want to be sensitive to you. I want to do it your way. I want to be led by you. I want to walk the way you would, the way that you have commanded me and ordered me to walk. I want to put your word in front of me so that I know what you're doing. Can you hear me? Yes. I want to put your word in front of me so that I might know what you're doing, what you want me to do. I pray that you'll roll out of bed in the morning and the first thing you'll begin to do is ask the Lord to fill you with compassion for the lost. Just go through the list. And I think bigger than that, you ask the Lord to fill you in his mercy with an awareness of his presence in your life. Lord, I don't want to go to, I don't want to spend the day ignoring you. Another day, another 24 hours ignoring you. I don't want to spend another 24 hours unconscious forgetting that you're even here. Can you hear me? Yes. And I'm going to tell you right now, dear people, this is the issue. It's not, a, it's not a peripheral issue. It's not a minor issue. This is the issue. Satan's a master of his craft, and he's done a very good job at distracting us. And it's time, let's stop, take the, let's, let's refuse to take the blessing of God and allow it to be our ruin. 
The blessing of God that you have a job. The blessing of God that you have the privilege to, to go and do the things that you have, are able to do with your car and with this and with that. And now it turns your heart from God. You're so carried about by the love of ease and luxury. Come on, people. It's time to start living by faith. And it's all right. It's all right, Anna. It's all right, Ali. I don't want her to go anywhere. I know it's a challenge, sweetie. Come back here. It's a challenge. Don't, don't run from the challenge. Boldly stand up to the challenge. I'm going to tell you this. Our emotions and our thoughts and our attitudes are much like that. They're constantly having to be managed. We're having to constantly regroup. Go grab them again. Ah, oh, it's slipping away. Go grab it again. After a while, it doesn't do all of that. It doesn't do all of that. After a while, it comes in order. It does, just like a child. So your thoughts, so your attitudes. God, the Holy Ghost, gives us an ability, both with our children, with our thoughts, with our attitudes, with our emotion, to where that our emotions come under the control and mastership of God, the Holy Ghost. People, it's God. You're going to have to give all attention and all diligence, all your attention. God said it this way. I'll give all diligence to making your calling and election a certainty. I'll say it again. To making your calling and election a certainty. Joshua, let's just go after a greater movement, the Holy Ghost in music. Let's just go after a greater movement. I mean, I praise God for the words, but let's, let's, let's make sure we got singing in the spirit with it. Let's make sure you, have, you, can build, you can build, you can collect everybody up together on words that everybody knows, but then it needs to go off into just a free place of hallelujah. Tongues and interpretation of tongues. I had so much fun. What was it, two Wednesday nights ago? Was it, when was the last time I was here? Two Sunday nights ago. Hallelujah. Because we just broke away in tongues and interpretation of tongues and the singing. Because I love worship. I love, I love interacting with him. I don't, like to, I don't like to feel distant from him in my prayer. I don't like to feel distant from him in my singing. I get all nervous. I get, all, I get all antsy. I'm like, uh-uh. I don't want to touch heaven. I want, I want God, the Holy Ghost. Yeah. What do I mean by that? I want Him exploding in my emotions. If God's not exploding in my emotions, I'm not happy. If God's not exploding, exploding in my passions, I'm not happy. Because that's where the river comes from. And if, we, if people can just grab a hold of it, because I'm telling you, you're listening better to me than you were earlier. Right now. Because it's a spiritual thing. But when we begin to realize that it is there in our emotions and our passions that God wants to explode like rivers and it's done in very practical ways, fundamentally in prayer and praise. And when you know that praise is just prayer set to music and prayer is praise without music. Now, is there supplication and intercession also? Yeah. But I, I believe everything's based upon the prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then we get into some supplication that is the supplicates of the Spirit of the Lord and the intercession of, the, of heaven. Whew. 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 Sweetheart, yes, love. have you had any bad attitudes towards me today? I haven't had any. <laughs> I, haven't had, I haven't had any towards you either. Did you know that there's husbands and wives that live in bad attitudes all day long between each other? And they shut God, the Holy Ghost, down. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you can hear me, but there's some people in here that do not want to hear. They will not believe. They will not hear it. And immediately, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I'm trying my best to get at you. You cannot go on resisting the Holy Ghost and expect that you're going to grow. You need to learn how to just say, Father, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do that anymore. People don't realize that the way they treat each other is the way they treat Father. That's what he said. He said, how can you say you love me whom you haven't seen when you hate your brother whom you have? Father, I'm going to tell you right now, and in the, in the relationship, dear people, 
God says to the, the husbands, dwell with your wives according to knowledge, otherwise you're, I'm not listening to your prayers. I can go on and on. How that the relationship that people have with each other has huge impact on the relationship that they have with the Father. And that's the way He ordained it to be, and it's going to be that way. You can self-justify and tell God how He's wrong all day long, but He's still right at the end of your argument. He's right. Because He knows more than the rest of us. <laughs> And I know that may be hard for some people to understand, but he does. He knows more. I want to break off the yoke, and I want to show you how to break off the yoke. I want to show you how to not allow the enemy to come in and destroy and ruin and stop the flow of heaven in your life. We want to get you off the roller coaster yeah. Amen. and into the rocket. Amen. Amen. Now the Lord knows and sees the hurting hearts that are here tonight. You listen to me. There's never an excuse, a finger accusation or a blame game that you want to participate in because otherwise, if you do, if you do, you'll never get rid of the hurting heart. But if you just be willing to come cast all your care upon Him, throw your whole life into the hands of Father, learn how to let Him be your defense, let her, learn how to let him be your suzerain, your shield. That's your benefactor, who's the one who's your provider, your protector, and your perfector. Say, he's my suzerain. He's my, suzerain. He's my provider, he's my, provider. My, protector, my protector, my perfector, my perfector. and he's my exceeding great reward. I'm going to tell you right now. There are plenty of places for offenses and hurts to come. And the more you walk in the anointing, the more you're going to be bombarded by persecutions, offenses, hurts. People are going to blame you for everything. But there is a place to be hidden in His glory where you don't feel any of it. It can't even get to your heart. It can't even get there. Where, because you're so immersed in love that as soon as you hear it, you're already forgiven it. You understand this place it comes from. It co you understand that it's not real. That it has nothing to do with truth. And that you, have, you end up having more of a compassion where the people that said it than an offense that they said it. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Father, once you come live in this realm, but you got to get rid of the stuff that you got maybe bound by now. Because to be bound by hurt or bound by offense or bound by unforgiveness, all it does is make you a candidate to receive more. Until it breaks you down and collapse under it into a heap of bitterness. And all the time separated from that, from the Holy Ghost. Because he's, he can't interact so long as you have, which is all long is you have unforgiveness. He can keep calling you, he can keep calling you, he can keep calling you to come, but he can't interact with you in, a, in the intimacy relationship because you've got to forgive from your heart and he'll forgive you. And that forgiveness is the basis of the relationship. And the basis of the intimacy, the basis of the interaction. Is there anyone in here tonight You've grown cold or lukewarm. Or you're watching me by web or by the YouTube. You've grown cold, lukewarm. God wants to change everything tonight and make it all fresh and make it all new. He wants to explode with His glory on the inside of you and your emotions and your passions and set you on fire with the good things of heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that's what we mean. That's what we mean by the fire. It's just the passions exploding and the emotions exploding with the excitements of God. 
Maybe, you've, maybe it's even worse. You walked away from God altogether. You feel the Spirit of the Lord tugging your heart right now. You, you, you want to get right. You want to come back. The Holy Spirit's calling you. He's ready to receive you right now. All you got to do is cry out to Him and He respond to you. He'll come fill you with His presence. He'll come give you the strength and the ability to do what's right. He'll break off the addiction. He'll break off the stronghold. Maybe you're stuck in religion. You've never known what it means to have a per personal relationship with the Lord. Tonight's your night. This moment's your time. With a sincere heart calling out to God, saying, Lord, I don't want just to have the form of the ritual. I want to have the intimacy and the interaction. That's what he wants. Or perhaps you've never even called upon the name of the Lord Jesus. You don't know what it means to be born again. You don't know what it means to be born of heaven and to be part of the family of God. Right now, all of that can change because God has vested all authority and all miracle working power in the name of Jesus. All you got to do is call upon his name. Hallelujah. And he'll come, heaven will come, change you. I want everybody in this place to just raise your hands towards heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for your mercy. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for pouring out the Holy Ghost upon us 2,000 years ago. We thank you that you poured out your Spirit upon all flesh, that if anybody would receive from you, that your glory would begin to overwhelm them. You would fill them, supply to them all that heaven has. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that every person in this place begins to understand the beauty of what it means to stand in your presence and enjoy your presence and interact with you and let every part of their life become submitted to you and under your control and under your rulership. Hallelujah. 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 I want to pray for anybody here tonight that if, if any of the things I've said are described, that's you. I want to pray for you. If there's anybody in this place tonight with unforgiveness in your heart, things have been going on in your life, they're not right. You've been ignoring God. You just haven't been able to understand it. I want you to just come. If you're sick in your body, you got sickness, any kind of fever, flu, whatever, you come, the Lord touch you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Let, every, let the Lord make everything right right now. Let Him fix everything that you have need of right now. Let him change the condition. You're standing in his presence before him. You came, you walked up here. You stood in this place in response to his call. And there's no way that he's going to not respond to you. So just go ahead and receive right now. Let the things that be healed... The things that need to be healed in your spirit, let them be healed right now. The things that need to be healed in your body, receive right now. The Lord touches you right now. 
Let His manifest presence overwhelm you. If you've not been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the, with the glory of this heavenly language and expression, just just receive right now. Hallelujah. Now I break the yoke of sickness right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over this church, over everybody in this church, over everybody that walks into this church. You foul spirit of sickness and disease. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You go. Go. I break off your yoke. You have no right among the house of God. No, no right among the people of God. Every hindrance, every, everything that would stand against the anointing and try to resist the anointing, I break off that power in Jesus' name. Every power that would try to withstand the manifest presence of Jesus or to stop that flow of His divine glory in your lives, it has to leave off its effect and power right now. So that you might be able to walk around in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Continually enjoying, aha, manda de ashaya, manda de risato. Thank you, Jesus. Mozan, thank you, Jesus. Ah, ha, bande, ha, mando seraha, madeya ha, bexte hede deshtevi, rasata, menangis, menangis, ha ha, hallelujah, yep. Hunger is a good thing. <laughs> Let me just say this. Let me tell you something. You can either get hungry or you can get discouraged. Seeing a need can go one of two ways. If you're not careful, you see a need and if you, if you, if you listen to the browbeating accusation of the enemy, this is one reason you want to grab a hold of condemnation and, and shame and guilt and run it off and don't commune with it because it can run ruin in your life when all of a sudden things are presented by the Holy Ghost and you see a need instead of getting hungry you'll get discouraged did you know you won't do anything with discouragement but walk away from it you listening to me yes. hunger, will bring, hunger will bring you to a place where you can lay hold on what God has for you Hunger will give you the ability to break through the offense, the wall, the resistance. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So from this day forward, you're just going to be hungry all the time and not discouraged. Hallelujah. 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 You just going to delight yourself in the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Ha Ha. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, he fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. He fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Now, Lord Jesus, Nicole wants to experience your manifest presence in a, glory, a greater way. 
Show her how easy it is. Show her how, show her how easy it is. Show her how easy it is. Cause the day to Show her, Lord Jesus. Show her. This whole afflicting, tormenting, agonizing sickness and disease. Get off the baby. In the name of Jesus. Out the house. Get out of the house. Out. You don't mess with baby no more. The kato yarina shikaya. Go from her, Jesus' name. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey guys, you're going to have to pay attention. And when I get near the speaker, you're going to have to turn the mic down. Otherwise, it's going to feed back and somebody's going to get their hurt. hurt. <laughs> Otherwise, if, you know what I'm saying to you? Are you with me? Can you guys just hang with me? Watch what I'm doing. <laughs> Jesus, touch the babies right now. <laughs> Touch Brandon right now, Father. Jesus name. Jesus name. Just stand in his presence. Just spend more time standing in his presence. And you'll be able to receive more. You'll be able to interact with him more. Can there be any greater privilege than interacting with God? Just to know that you could actually interact with the living God. That he would say, come on in. I've been waiting for you. Huh? To know that we have access by the Spirit. To recognize that we can come in with our boldness to do his glory realm. Don't you let Satan and lies and all the doubt and unbelief try to tell you it's not so. Don't you let the things of this world and the cares of this life steal from you the access and the privilege. Don't do it. Jesus. Must. But now in Jesus' name. But now in Jesus' name. Whatever you have need of, just receive right now. Just receive. Whatever you have need of, just receive. Mandak stia teresh Malandras de Veti Kasht. You know what God can fix? You know what God can heal? You know what God can change? You know what God can work in the midst of? Everything you give to Him. Everything you hang on to, it's yours. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Talk to you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for a great outpouring of your spirit. You can now turn it back up. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, my God, the day. Thank you, Jesus. Mezezo. 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 
Increase. 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 You know, for me, it's just, for me, these kind of responses tonight result in people maturing in the things of the Spirit. When you decide, I'm not going, I'm not going to remain the way that I am. I'm going to, I'm going to press in for the change. Now, from the crown of your head, so your feet. Hey, from the cr now in Jesus' name. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you jump in head first. Don't hide in the shadows. No hiding in the nursery. Get into the flow. Get into a passionate hunger and pursuit of heaven. Don't worry about the rest. Father, take care of the rest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I command you to be healed right now. There it goes right there. In Jesus' name. There it is. There it is. It ain't any harder than that. I can tell when somebody gets healed and when they don't get healed most of the time. Not 100% accurate, but I... In Jesus' name. What's wrong? What's up? What troubles you? Huh? Nothing too hard for God. You agree with God. Don't agree with all the other stuff. You know what? I'm going to just tell you right now. You listen to me. Too many people listen to the counsel of the ungodly and they, mi they miss out on the flow of heaven. As long as you won't walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful, you'll delight yourself in the Lord. And you'll be like a tree planted by the river of living water. And you'll be continually bringing forth fruit and it will be ripe fruit. And it'll be fruit unto perfection. It won't be fruit that's just all choked by the CRP. Yeah. Cares, riches, pleasures. CRP. I like that, CRP. Because that's what it is. Can you hear me how practical that is? Can you hear how practical that is? Do you see how deceptive and how subtle Satan can get in with this nonsense? And choke the word? And choke it? Have you tried to operate being choked lately? <laughs> Let me just tell you something. You know how much place we give to the devil? Zero. You know how we do that? As soon as we recognize anything that's not of God, we shut it down, repent, and, forg and ask for forgiveness. And usually that's going to be in some dimension of relationship. That's right. If it doesn't look like God, the fruit of the Spirit, hallelujah, or the activity of the Holy Ghost, we get rid of it quickly. <laughs> hallelujah. Let your hands towards heaven. What is it you want? I want to be on fire. Well, that's good. Stand in his presence. Father is giving you this great privilege of knowing him. He's giving you this great privilege of accessing the throne room. But you've got a whole bunch of rebellious demon spirits and power of hell and that functions and operates and gets permission through earthly and worldly interests to hinder you. You hear me? They have no right, but they get permission to earthly and worldly hinder, interest to hinder you. They have no right. But my goodness, when you begin to take up the privilege and the riches and the unimaginable opportunity that we have to interact with Father, most of that stuff's going to be fixed. 
Now, right now, in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name. The Lord fixes you in the inside there. Now, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Just be filled right now. Just be filled. Past. Be filled, Holy Ghost girl. You be filled. You be filled. You be filled. You be filled, Maseta. You be filled, Mosataya. You be filled, Brasatanda Ishekeya. You be filled, Marista. Be filled, Mandan Braset. Be filled. Right out of your belly flows. Right now. You think of what you, you've done in this world that you've enjoyed the most. Multiply that by billions upon billions and begin to slightly comprehend what you've been missing out all the time on in, he, in a heavenly realm because you've never learned how to enjoy His presence. You've never learned how to press past the things that would hinder you and stop you. You've never learned how to take a hold of that which the Word of God describes. But tonight, I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus Christ, this stuff changes. It changes. It changes. It changes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for Jesus. Everything comes under His divine Everything conforms to his image. Everything bows to his word. Everything. All your interest. All that you perceived and known about yourself. Or thought that you knew. Heaven, Claire, heaven. Come, bring her. That's uh, that is a cry for the pastoral ministries. Heaven, Claire. Just lift your hands towards heaven right now. There you go. <laughs> That's good. Now touch her, Lord Jesus. <laughs> right now in Jesus' name. Right now in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you for the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it, baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tonight, we want you to make a, a covenant with your tongue. Take, make a covenant with your mouth. It is a little member, but it is significant, isn't it? Compared to your hand, it is a literal little member. And your foot it is a little member. Hey, make a covenant with it tonight that it is not allowed to speak complaining. It's not allowed to complain. Amen. Yes, Lord. You can think about it till you're about to blow up, but your mouth isn't allowed to speak it. <laughs> and if you'll do this, if you'll do this, God the Holy Ghost will give you the ability and He will give you the strength. And suddenly, suddenly you'll find a place in Him where there is no complaint. It just living in the continual praises of all that he's doing. Complaint is seeing, is, 
the complaint is an expression that you're unable to see what God is doing. There come a place in your life as you walk with Him where all you can see is what He's doing. And, it's, and then it's just praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. 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 Bless this family, Lord. Blessed. I command you to be blessed. Hallelujah. And I promise you, the Lord's going to take good care of you. Hallelujah. I promise you, based upon the good word of the Lord, He's going to take good care of you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Higher. That's right. That's right, Jacqueline. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's Father's really, but Father's very specific on it. He says, do not be conformed to this world. Now, the God who is coming to judge the world in righteousness will decide whether or not you conform to this world or not. He's made it very clear to us so that we can understand it and see it. And he has all the right to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, if we have conformed to this world and been unwilling to repent and turn from it and instead be transfigured by the renewing of our mind and being willing to conform to the image of Jesus. Tonight, there are those in this place that Father is dealing with. You cannot hide from God. You cannot, you cannot go around based upon some wrong, false model say that you write when God's Word stands forever. You decide tonight where you are at. And if you recognize that you're conforming to this world, then you just repent and you get right. And you say, Lord, from this day forward, I'm serving you. I'm done with the stuff. I'm done with the world. You don't have to. You don't have to. You can go on living your life the way you want to live it, but it ain't going to work out through you throughout the ages. It ain't going to work out for you. God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. If you sow to the flesh, you shall have the flesh reap corruption. You sow your life into this world, you will be destroyed. That is just the way it is. And I'm very happy about it because I don't want a bunch of hell around me for the rest of eternity. Are you listening to me? I want heaven and I'm, I'm telling you right now, get, fall in love with heaven. All you want, want, all you're going to want is heaven. Don't miss out on the riches. Don't miss out on the riches. Don't miss out on the riches of eternal life that you can have right now in this life and in the life to come. Praise God. Jesus. Jesus. Ist. Jesus. Este Peronasi. Just stand in His presence more, and you'll receive more. Just stand in His presence. Allow God to begin to reveal His manifest presence.
and the more you'll go after the manifest presence and experience his manifest presence, stronger to get. Somebody said, what does that manifest presence look like? Joy unspeakable. What does that manifest presence look like? Peace that passes understanding. What does that manifest presence look like? Love that goes beyond all knowledge. And all that in heaven too. Now here's what the Lord, for every person in this place that's willing to hear, here's what Father's going to do. He's going to show you how to bring forth fruit into perfection. He's going to show you how to mature in the realms of His love and His nature and His splendor and His glory and His peace, His joy, His long-suffering, His goodness. And in the midst of all that, He's going to show you how easy it is to flow in the expressions of his authority and of his power, which brings deliverance to all the people that are around you. It brings supply to all the needs. Spiritually, physically, materially, financially. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. You're not going to mature in tongues and interpretation in tongues unless you give yourself to it. Somebody said, I haven't had an opportunity. You've got 24 hours in a day. <laughs> you get into a room, start praying, begin in the You let that excel, and this is going to come into, into the interpretation of tongues. It's going to come into prophecy. It's going to come into... That's the manifest presence of the Lord at work. It is, it's explosive. I pray every one of you start enjoying this like never before. I know many of you are already enjoying these things in different dimensions. But Father's looking for some maturity. He's looking for some growth. I'm expecting, I'm expecting that next year we're going to be able to say that we're in college. I, I tell you, right? God, God, Father has quick advancement. Amen. Amen. That there's been serious maturity, hallelujah, in the spirit, hallelujah. No longer, ha <laughs> ha. We say, we write unto you young men. And, and you know, the fruit of it is, is we write unto you young men because the word of God abides in you and you have conquered the wicked one at every point. Amen. That's college level. <laughs> well, actually, it's young men. It's young men. So it could actually write for junior high. But, I mean, you know, you come up for me. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Don't miss out on the greatest thing that has ever been, the greatest opportunity that's ever been given to man. Do not be stupid. <laughs> Do not be blinded by mind-blinding spirits. Do not be enticed by the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life that is at work enticing men in this world to deceive you to where that you, all you can see is the gutter that will destroy your soul in hell forever. When all the time, the brightness of the glorious light of the gospel is shining. Amen. An opportunity for you to live in the majesty and the splendor of pleasure that goes beyond anything that Satan has ever been able. Satan has, Satan could only create pleasures within the realms of the septic system of life. The filth of life. Father has pleasures at his right hand that are forevermore and that are so full of ecstasy and glory that you have to experience them to even begin to 
to even begin to understand because it's, it goes beyond expression. All we can say is it's joy unspeakable. Yeah. It's so much joy you can't even talk about it. Hallelujah. It's so much peace that passes understanding you can't even begin to describe it. It's love that goes beyond all knowledge. To know the love that passes knowledge. Do not let the cares of this life rip you off anymore. Amen. Tonight, draw the line in your life. Do not let the preoccupations and distractions that were designed by the prince of the power of the air hold you back anymore Amen. from pursuing that which Father has given to us. Jesus Christ is the door. You can step in through the door and come into this other realm. You have to leave your bad attitudes outside, your stinginess, your selfishness, your self-interest, all the stuff can't come in. Can't come in. People want to come and have a revelation of God with all the sin in their life. You can't. The sin must be dealt with by the blood of Jesus Christ and the new birth. People want, to, people want to compromise all these things in their life and still interact with God and wonder why they can't interact with God because they've got a wrong definition of grace. You can't. God's just as holy as he's ever been. His realm is just as sacred as he's ever been. And you're not going to be wrapped up and entangled in this, uh, all this stuff and know him. You'll have religion. You'll have all these crazy, wild-eyed expressions of what God supposedly is. And a lot of people get a familiar spirit pursuing power unauthorized power unauthorized power is gaining some kind of supernatural ability without the holy life consecrated life and it's happening everywhere because we live in seducing times we live in apostate times we live in doctrines of devil's times so don't get don't go don't go follow false models follow the word of god it's a light into our Light unto our feet, light unto our path, lamp unto our feet. To God's way. You hunger and thirst after righteousness, then I promise you, you will be filled. You seek first the kingdom of God, and we're talking about the heavenly realm, the manifest presence, and it will be yours. Amen. Amen. And you'll grow and you'll mature and it becomes stronger and there'll be a continual increase. And the world will never be the same because of it. Amen. The world will never be the same. Every man and every woman who's ever stepped into this glory and gone on with God has, has left a world totally changed behind them. They impacted. Wigglesworth impacted the world. Wigglesworth's life impacted the world. Pop Seymour's life impacted the world. Evan Roberts' life impacted the world. Paul Roberts' life impacted the world. God wants your life to impact the world. Yes. Amen. But that's only possible because you let him live and you no longer live. Because the God kind of life becomes better than your kind of life. Yes. His interest better than your interest. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We love all of you. Pray God's richest blessing upon you with all spiritual blessings in a heavenly realm. Get rid of the earth. Get rid of the earthly stuff. Get heavenly, because you're heavenly. Get rid of the worldly stuff. It's no value. Amen. Amen. Find a bunch of people, tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name.